There's a lot going on in SQL Database in Fabric. Here, get a sneak peek or what's new in the areas of Copilot, data virtualization, notebooks, and backup restore, and more this week on Data Exposed. Hi, welcome to Data Exposed. We have a super exciting jam-packed episode planned for you today on SQL Database in Fabric. We're going to take you through a sneak peek and, quite frankly, a really fast show of all the new things the team has been working on. And depending on when you watch this episode, they're either coming soon or available now. So this is the wonderful product management, some of the product managers from the team. We're going to get right into it, uh, starting with uh, Yole. So uh, Yole. Thanks so much. I took Yole out of the stream, not Deniker. Uh, Yole, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to go right into it. Tell us what's new in the Copilot space. Thank you so much, Anna. So my name is Yole. Today, I just like kind of kick everyone off. We're going to go like with some a lot of demos in these feature areas, including Copilot, data virtualizations, notebook integrations, backup, and restore experiences. So today, we're going to talk about uh, what's new or giving you like a sneak peek demo of um, what's coming down the road. So I am the PM for Copilot. So let's get started with Copilot first. Just some like very high overview of what we have today in our Copilot experiences. We have the inline code completion feature. We have two quick actions, fix query errors, explain the code. We also have a sidecar chat that is powered by Copilot. This is kind of our focus today. Um, and what I really want to talk about is that today we have two scenarios that we are supporting. The first one is natural language to SQL conversion. And the other one is uh, documentation based QA. So you can ask Copilot questions and it will give you a response that's backed by our MS Learn box. So these are these all these like existing features we, we talked about actually like previously in a uh, older episode with Anna. If you're interested to check out more, feel free to go to the aka.ms link below or look at our MS Learn box. And then what I really want to talk about today is something really exciting. We are going to have support for more scenarios coming soon later this year. So on top of the two tools that we have, uh, we're going to have support for performance monitoring. We're going to have support for schema design, troubleshooting errors, code an analysis. So a lot of really good stuff coming soon. And this is kind of like what I want to show you in our demo later. So if you've never seen the editor before, this is how it looks like. If you click the Copilot button, it'll open up the sidecar chat. You can choose if you want to be in read-only mode or if you want to be in read-write with approval mode. So today I'm asking Copilot to help me refactor this query. So after just kind of like analyzing for a little bit, learning for a little bit, you can see that Copilot actually helps identify that there is an anti pattern in this query. So it kind of helped me refactor this query so that it's more readable and more efficient. And another scenario that we are supporting now is um, performance monitoring. So you can ask Copilot to help you generate a report at my database performance. This scenario is actually something our public preview customers have been really looking forward to. And now we have support for this as well. And over here, you can see that there is a lot of information. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. There is gives you like a historical CPU usage summary. There's plan cache bloat. Um, there's also other information like historical worker load. Uh, session load, the space usage, and all the good stuff. And at the very bottom, it gives you a summary of findings telling you like, oh, everything seems pretty OK, low CPU, session load, some brief spikes in CPU. But the real problem is that there seems to be high percentage of single use plans. So now that we have all this information, it suggests me to go further to investigate more for optimization. So this is really great for our developers or people who doesn't really have that monitoring expertise. And if you are very interested or if there's like a scenario that you really want, please comment below in this video and let the team know. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Yole. OK, so that was the first stop on our tour of what's going on in SQL Database and Fabric lately. Um, thanks so much, Yole. Uh, next, we're going to go into Hugo Space, which happens to be the data virtualization, data virtualization space and one I'm super excited about. So Hugo. What's going on in this space? Quite a lot, Anna. So today, we are going to be announcing 
pretty soon the preview of Open Rule Set and External Table for data visualization for Fabric SQL database. That means our customers can now query CSV and Parquet files either for read purposes or ingestion purposes. All of them will work. We, we established the security integration using HID. And, and now, because we are announcing Fabric SQL database, now we have the same consistency experience across the board in all the flavors of SQL. So Yay. either that the SQL Server on-prem, Azure SQL database, SQL MI, it works the same way across the board now. Awesome. That is great to see. OK, and then can we take a look? Yes. Awesome. Let's take a look. With data virtualization, Fabric SQL database can now access CSV and Parquet files from one lake without the need to ingest them into the database. In this example, we have a lake house called Cold Lake inside a Contoso folder with sales data from past years. I can use data virtualization to ingest the data into my database, but I don't need to. I can still leverage all the SQL capabilities, but leaving the data where it is without causing any data duplication. I can use Open Rule Set for all my ad hoc needs. I can combine it with views, book for data ingestion, or even together with joins with other SQL tables. All that I need is the ABFS location of the file to access it. I can also create an external table that will act like a pointer, like a shortcut to the file. It will behave just like a regular SQL table, but keeping the data where it is in one lake. This way, your application can use Fabric SQL database as a data hub and access files across Fabric without needing to change the context. With external tables created, I can use that in combination with Copilot. And even though there is no data loaded into SQL, Copilot can still leverage the context of the external tables to provide accurate insights. For example, I want Copilot to help me find the most popular items sold by year, and I want to group that by age groups. You can see the command Copilot provides understands the external table context, the columns, the schema, it takes full advantage of T-SQL with multiple joins and functions and does all of that without loading the data into SQL. This is the power of Copilot and data virtualization for Fabric SQL database. Wow, that is super cool, Hugo. I've been waiting for this for so long. I know people <laughs> have been waiting as well. Uh, any tips or tricks for folks who maybe are just getting started with this new capability? I would say pay attention to this space. There's a lot of things going on. We're going to be making some announcements pretty soon as well. So pay attention to that. That's number, number one. Awesome. Great. OK, awesome. Thanks so much, Hugo. Uh, we are going to roll right on with our show, bringing up Sequant. Uh, Sequant, thanks so much uh, for coming on the show to talk, about, to talk to us about what's new in the integration space. Today, so today uh, uh, Anna, as you know, integration is, is huge in, in Fabric. Today, I'm going to be talking specifically about notebook integration. I got three very exciting things to share with the with everybody here. And I'm thinking, let's roll the, our, um, our demo and show everybody through the demo, and then I can talk about it a little bit. Awesome. Great. Yeah, let's uh, roll the demo. In this demo, I will show how you can use PySpark Scala, and T-SQL magic in Notebook to connect to your SQL database. When you, once you create a Notebook, uh, you need to make sure, if you want to use PySparp, make sure your um, environment has a runtime 1.3 because that contains Spark 3.5 in there. And in the code, you have to make sure in the cell you are saying import uh, and this library, that's another important part. And in your URL, uh, you are going to be using the server name. Make sure you do not forget uh, column 1433 in there and your database name. Um, you are uh, over here on line number three, you notice that I'm creating the raw data. And on line number four, I'm assigning the header. And then I'm creating a data frame using the Spark. And then I'm writing it. And I'm through line number six, I'm saying create a table called public sample pi and add the data out of frame. That, like our table got created. And uh, I did another read. So we have the data here. So this is your pi Spark. Now let's move on to Scala. 
in Scala, we have to import these three uh, libraries for it to make work. And uh, for the URLs, I'm going to make sure that that you are adding um, 1433 here and uh, severing and the uh, database name of them. And uh, the syntax for Scala is that, you know, this is how you create the raw data and here's your schema. And then you create a data frame here and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna uh, create a new table, add the data, and then we are going to read it back again. All right, it looks like we successfully uh, ran the code. Uh, we created the table and when we read it, we got the data back. Now let's go back to our T-Magic SQL. T-SQL magic, what you have to do is you have to make sure you are doing percent percent T-SQL and our artifact name, which is we were entering all our data in a database called DA test. It is of type SQL database. It's inside this workspace. So this whole line is very useful. Now, just imagine if you are you have two different SQL databases in two different workspaces, you could have two separate cells and you could call data and put it into your data frame and do whatever you wanna do. So over here, just for simplicity's sake. So we are running this T-SQL magic to see how quickly we can get the data back. Looks like we got this data. I put in the pretty much same data in both the tables, so we got this. Uh, in the next cell, what I'm gonna show you is how easy it is to you know, use a sync command, and I'm gonna create a table called employee. All right, we got that created. And the next one, I am inserting some data into this table. And in the next one, I'm creating a store procedure from here. Then I will just execute it. All right, so we execute it. I will go back to our database. I want to show you all the stuff that got created there. So we created an employee table. We created public example, party one. And then we created a table called public example, Spark. That's it for this demo. Thank you so much. All right, Anna. So you saw how exciting it is. We had a lot of customers who were waiting to use SQL with the notebook and, you know, advantages are numerous. All the data engineers know how important the notebook piece is that they can create data flows. They can bring the data. They can combine the data from multiple places, data warehouse, SQL, or Lake. And, uh, you know, sky's the limit when you look at it. Yeah, this is is a very important integration piece that people are waiting for it. I want to let everybody know, anybody who was waiting for Spark and Scala for a while, it's uh, going to be deployed worldwide starting today. So by the end of this week, uh, hopefully you guys can all try these. Awesome, this great, Sukhan. And so that means by the time you guys are watching this episode, it's probably going to be available. So go check it out. My recommendation is to bookmark this video so you can reference exactly how Saquon did it the first time because the first time you're getting connected in Notebook, uh, in my opinion, in my experience, is always the biggest challenge. Um, so thank you, Saquon, for documenting that so everyone can reference this later. Yes. Yes, and one one last thing. There's so much more that's coming, um, hopefully in, um, in a few more months. So uh, stay tuned. Um, in this awesome. space. Thank you. Watch this space. I think that's what everyone has said, which we love to see all the things everyone's working on. Um, thanks, Saquon. Uh, last but not least, in our stop of what's going on uh, across SQL Database in Fabric, we have Deniker, who works on Backup Restore across uh, SQL. And I'd love to understand like what's going on in the SQL DB and Fabric space. Yeah. Um, so today we are announcing the public preview of the ability to change your retention for your automatic backups and we will GA pretty soon. Um, as you all know, uh, built-in automatic backups is a fundamental requirement for any PaaS or a SaaS provider. Um, for Fabric SQL Database, the default retention today is fixed at seven days. Uh, with this enhancement, which is rolling out this week, um, you will have the ability to change it from uh, anywhere from one day to 35 days, depending on your business needs. Uh, look forward to more capabilities in the in this area, and you have a demo coming up. Awesome, cool. Let's let's roll it. Hi, my name is Dinakar, and I'm a product manager in the Azure SQL team. In this demo, 
I will show you two capabilities in the backup restore area that are coming up shortly. Having a built-in database backups is a fundamental feature for any managed database provider. Fabric SQL Database also comes with built-in automated backups. The first demo I'm going to show you is the ability to configure a retention period for this automated built-in backups. For that, first I will go to my workspace and find the database for which I want to configure the retention and then select the database. Once I'm connected to the database, I will find this settings icon on the top left and then click on it. In the settings blade, one of the parameters is the backup retention policy. When I click on it, I can see the current retention period, which right now says seven days. From here, I can update this value to any time between one and 35 days. Once I update and save this setting, Fabric will keep the backups for up to 35 days from this point on. And in the next 35 days, I can restore back to any point within this last 35 days. I can exit out of this window now. For the second demo, or the second capability I want to show you today is the restore database. For this, I will go back to the workspace dashboard and I will select the three dots next to the database for which I want to perform the restore. And then select the restore database option. In this window, first I need to type the name of the database. Verify the source database information. Now I can see the earliest restore point and the latest restore point here. This is the restorable time range and I can issue a restore to any point within this range. By default, the most recent point is selected. I can click on the calendar and choose any time within this range. Depending on the size of the database, the restore op operation should be completed in a few minutes. So I can click create and let the restore operation succeed. In this demo, first we saw how to configure the retention period for the built-in automated backups. Next, we performed a point in time restore and created a new database with the restored data. This concludes the demo. Thank you. Awesome. Great to see that. Love to see these things finally start to light up uh, in SQL Database in Fabric. Uh, I know there's some other things we're working on. Anything that you can comment on right now or anything else you want to share on Backup and Restore? Um, yeah, so we have uh, additional capabilities that we are planning. Uh, things like uh, automated uh, ZRS. Uh, as your backup storage um, so that your backups can be zone redundant. Um, if there is a failure in one zone, um, the backups are available in the other zone and the failures are automatic. So it's pretty seamless, um, seamless uh, interruptions for your, uh, for your databases. Awesome. And Great. We have, we have a lot more coming up uh, pretty soon. Stay tuned. Awesome. Yeah, I know there's a lot of planned uh, in this space. So I guess just like every other space, we're going to say watch this space. Um, thanks so much, Denker. Uh, it was great to see uh, this in action. I'm going to bring everybody else on. Uh, folks, you got a glimpse today of what's going on in SQL Database and Fabric. We have more episodes that are going to be dropping in the coming weeks. Uh, we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. Just know that we are a space to watch. So definitely watch this space if you learn one thing about what's going on here. Uh, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment and let us know uh, which space you're most excited to watch and actually get hands on with. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs> <laughs>